Hey everyone, welcome to another ink review. Today we are going to check out the Dartramentus Archive ink. Now a few days ago I posted the review for the Noodleless Bulletproof Black ink. Now these two inks, they are waterproof, but the Noodleless ink, it dries pretty slowly. So I'm going to explore other waterproof inks and see how they fare. So today we are going to look at Dartramentus. The company is from Germany and this is one of their more expensive black inks out there, more expensive compared to the platinum carbon ink. The ink capacity for this bottle is 35 ml. As the name suggests, this is archival ink and it's made exclusively for fountain pens use. So um, no other information on the label. The company also makes another black ink which is called document ink which is also waterproof. I don't really know the difference between this and that. Both are waterproof, both are black so I don't understand why there's a need for two black inks. This bottle opening, this is a bit small so this is not suitable for deep pen use. So today I'm going to use this fountain pen, the Duke 209. The Duke 209 is a fude nib pen, so the tip here at the end, it's bent. Now this pen is capable of producing thin and thick lines, so when it produces thick lines, if you use it with noodleless ink, which doesn't dry very fast, it's really a bad combination. One issue I can foresee with this bottle design is when the ink level gets low, it's going to be a bit difficult to refill your fountain pen by just putting it inside. And I think when you tilt it like this, um, because of the bottle design, it's also going to be a bit difficult to access the ink. Anyway, this is a pretty new bottle, so I don't have that problem yet. These are the four pieces of paper that I will be testing the ink with today. This is Archer's 100% cotton watercolor paper, Daigler Rowley watercolor paper, 0% cotton. This is Canson watercolor paper, no cotton content as well. Strathmore writing paper, 25% cotton. All of this paper are cellulose paper. With my earlier review for the Noodleless Bulletproof Black ink, the lines, they feather on the Canson and on the Strathmore writing paper. So today, we're going to see if the Dartramentus, if it will fare better. Let's start with the arches. Let's put down a thick line. So this is a really a very dry paper. It soaks up ink and water. So you can see all the dry edges. To get lines with sharp edges, you have to write a bit slower, but even so, it's really challenging. 100% cotton. Let me press down a bit harder to release more ink. Wow, this is really dry. It's almost as if I'm writing with pastel or chalk. This is the Daler Rowney paper. Notice this paper is not as dry compared to the other paper. I'm able to get lines with sharp edges very easily. The edges are sharp, but they are still jagged because of the cold press texture of this paper. Next, we'll move on to the Canson watercolor paper. This paper is much smoother. That's why the lines, the edges, they are smoother as well. Edges, they are very sharp. And lastly, the Strathmore writing paper. The lines are pretty sharp and the ink dries much faster compared to noodleless ink. And now let's test the ink and see if it's waterproof. Unlike the review with the noodleless bulletproof black ink, I did not use hot air to dry this. I just left the 
paper in room temperature for a few minutes. So this is pretty waterproof. I can see some ink coming off, but I would still consider this to be waterproof because well, if I'm painting with watercolor, I won't be able to notice anything different except that this looks pretty permanent to me. Next we have Dela Rowney. This is the paper that I use quite often for most of my YouTube videos when it comes to color mixing because this paper is very white and it shows off the colors really well. And the ink, this is as waterproof as it can get. Next we have Kenson watercolor paper. This is the paper that was a bit problematic with noodleless ink. After I applied water, there was some feathering. So let's try and see what happens here. Performs really well. None of the issues that I observe with the noodleless ink. And lastly, we have the Strathmore writing paper. So this was noodleless ink. And now let's put some water on the Ultramentus Archive ink. Absolutely no problem at all. Fantastic. Water resistant. In fact, there is a lot of water on the surface and the ink. It doesn't feather at all. Just for comparison, the noodleless bulletproof black. And this is the the Ultramentus ink. So from what I can see, this ink is definitely very waterproof. The performance is so from what I can see, this ink is definitely very waterproof. The performance is excellent. So if you're looking for ink to use with your watercolor pen and ink sketches, this can be a good option. The only downside is this is quite pricey, more expensive compared to noodleless ink or platinum carbon ink. The quality is definitely there, so it might be worth the money after all. As with most waterproof ink, I would recommend you clean out your fountain pens once in a while just to be safe because um, there's no mention of the content of this ink, so I don't know if it's pigmented or not pigmented. But usually for waterproof inks, they should be pigmented. And because of that, you should definitely uh, wash out your pens, especially if you are not going to be using the pen for long periods of time. So that's all for my review today. This is a good ink for fountain pen use. The ink is very dark, it's very permanent, waterproof. I think it's a pretty good ink. If you're also using the Diatramentus ink, um, whether it's the archival ink or document ink or other color inks that they have, I would love to hear from your comments because I don't really have a lot of experience with Diatramentus except for this bottle that I have and the uh, the brown bottle that um, I featured a few months ago. All right, thanks for watching. I hope this video is helpful. See you in the next video. Bye.